Hey, what's up? This is Brother Tots, and today I just really want to talk about evangelism from a, from a stance of righteousness, boldness, and conviction. I'm going to preach from a position of that because the Lord has really put that on my heart. So first of all, um, you know, when we, when we evangelize, you know, we have to expect that the world will hate us. You know, our, our purpose in evangelizing is to get the world saved, you know, and so I really want to read in, in order to evangelize, you have to be jealous for God as God is jealous for you. And you have to be loved by those whom God is jealous for. That's the, that's the straight line of it. You have to be loved by those whom God is jealous for, whom God wants to get. Because not all, all of the people are going to accept the gospel of Jesus Christ. Like in Matthew 10, it says that the gospel in Jesus himself is the dividing line of families. He's the ones who's supposed to split families up, split humanity into two categories, lost and saved. And so, you know, when we preach Jesus, the world will hate us. And so I just really want to read John 15. And it says, if the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it will love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Remember what I told you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they also persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they obey my teaching, they will obey yours also. They will treat you this way because of my name, for they do not know the one who sent, who sent me. I had not come and spoken to them. They would not be guilty of sin, but now they have no excuse for sin. Whoever hates me hates my father as well. And so you see, guys, so that's the thing, though. If we're in Christ Jesus, we're supposed to be hated. And so that's the thing. That's why, like, you might feel in the heart that, like, you don't really want to go out there and evangelize. But, guys, but consider this, though. If somebody's soul is at stake, either going to heaven or hell, why not preach the gospel anyways? If you're loved by God anyways, like, if you receive the love of God in your heart and you're having so much joy and fulfillment in Him, then why care if another person really hates you or not? I mean, you see, so that's why, like, when I actually went to Peninsula Bible Church and... Um, and started to dialogue, discuss about how uh, about the topic of evangelism. One of the pastors was saying that it's actually much easier to evangelize to a stranger rather than is to a close friend or a relative or who knows what in your close circles, right? It's easier to talk to a stranger because the stranger you see once and whether or not they hate you or love you, you, you have absolutely no relation with them whatsoever. So it's just easy though. And, you know, honestly, like it's just, you know, whether or not you screw up preaching the gospel or not, I mean, they're just strangers and they're and chances are you're never going to talk to them ever again. But it's much harder to preach to like professors. I mean, especially those people who are who are close to you, but much smarter than you or in authority, like your parents, professors. But it's also much harder to preach to an unbelieving friend because, you know, if you're a friend, like you're with them for kind of not forever, but you're you're going to be be around them for such a long time. And if you screw up or if they hate the gospel, they're also going to hate you. And I feel like that's where it becomes really hard. But honestly, though, like the best way to actually just start preaching and to not be ashamed of anything is just to pray to the Lord that he'll give you a power of love and a sound mind, like it says in 2 Timothy 1.7. And also just to pray to God every day, just to make God the number one priority in your life. Get on your knees and say, God, please show me your full love. Please make me more hotter and jealous for you. Please make me, don't make anything else much more important than, in life than you. And I don't want to fall into any sort of idolatry of anything. And the Lord will show himself. The Lord will give you his peace, his gracious mercy, and he'll give you everything um, to love him even more. And so, you know, I've been criticized for my evangelism. And trust me, though, like when I started, I handed out preaching gospel tracts. I started to talk to people and say, hey, can I talk to you about Jesus? Or I knocked on doors and said, hey, Jesus loves you. And I started to preach the gospel that way. But, you know, like people can criticize me, you know, from within the Christian church have criticized me. But one thing I'll say, though, even though you mess up preaching the gospel, if you have the right intent, God will always forgive you. And so you see, I just want to read Philippians 1. Um, 115 through 18. It says, Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The one preach Christ out of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add to my affliction to my bonds. 
well, yeah, you see, like, whether or not you're sincere or not, Christ's gospel has to be preached because the gospel is ultimately what determines whether or not the person will go to heaven or hell. You see, God can sovereignly appear in that person's life and, um, and show himself, and people don't have to preach the gospel, but he chooses to use the believers to start preaching the gospel. So we have to preach the gospel, though. I mean, if we go to, like, you know, 1 Corinthians like First Corinthians 9, it says, like, Paul says that, woe is me if I do not preach the gospel. Or what if do I have to boast of if I preach the gospel? Because I have to, right? So, like, in, in Philippians 1 here, it says, like, and let me just keep on reading, but the other of love, knowing that I'm set for the defense of the gospel, what then, notwithstanding, every way, whether in pretense or truth, Christ is preached, and therein do rejoice, yeah, and I will rejoice. So whether or not the person preaching the gospel is bad, whether it's a street preacher, whether it's like the gospel is preached in an insincere way from the bottom of the heart, or whether it's preached in a sincere but a bad way, um, whether or not you agree to the methods that they're doing to preach the gospel, um, you know, honestly, like, and, or whether or not it's led by the Spirit or not, um, you know what? It, the Christ's gospel has to be preached, though, because that's the ultimate determin determiner or whether or not that person is going to spend eternity in hell or in heaven. So, so whether or not, like, you're, you're not that skilled at preaching the gospel or whether or not, like, like anything else or you're busy or any sort of situation in life happens or whether or not you feel led or not led by the Holy Spirit. I mean, you want to be led by the Holy Spirit because that's going to give you the fruit of the result. But whether or not you like sincerely feel the Holy Spirit or really loosely feel the Holy Spirit, just preach anyways, just preach the gospel anyways, right? Like, um, probably it's be best not to preach the same person twice, but you know, whether or I've done the mistake of preaching to the same person twice, but like, anyways, we have to be crazy for the gospel. We have to preach it. I mean, there's just no excuse of not preaching the gospel or not sharing that you're in Christ Jesus. Like if you've received so much of his love, I mean, like, I mean, there's just no excuse. And that's what, what the Bible says. Like if we read first Corinthians nine and Philippians one, it's clear that there's absolutely just no excuse for not preaching the gospel. And you know, like people say, oh, like, um, you know, like, I, I mean, like, you know, and this is the thing, though. I mean, it took me two years. Like, honestly, I'm going to express my own sins. It took me two years to get to the point where I'm actually boldly preaching the gospel now. So I know that um, the Spirit moves sovereignly and in different ways in many people because all people or all believers in the body of Christ have different hearts, have different, um, their their walks of God are, you know, are different. So um, so I know that, um, that, you know, it might take the, it might take, like, time to build up boldness and the ability and the confidence and the uh, maturity to preach the gospel. But you know what? But like, and it takes the sovereign will of the spirit. The spirit will move sovereignly in a person's life and the spirit will activate gifts, deactivate gifts, um, will strengthen people, will embolden people, um, and will do all those sorts of things so that you're going to be able to preach the gospel. And this, the Spirit sovereign, sovereignly moves in each individual in different ways. So, like, for example, like, if there's a younger, if there's another believer than, other than me, right? He, the Spirit might um, activate his, like, gift of, like, prophecy or something like that. So he might not be able to evangelize very well, right? Or he might not have the boldness like me and the desire or the burden of the Lord in me to preach the gospel, right? But that's okay, though. The Spirit's still working in him. But, like, in me, like, the Spirit might be working and giving me the burden of the Lord to preach the gospel to everybody, the burden to care for lost souls that are going to hell, right? So the Spirit will move differently in different types of people. But in any case, though, whether or not, like, whether or not, like, where you are in the Christian walk doesn't really matter, though. You know, like, at least, like, if our hearts, if we turn our hearts to the Lord um, always, and um, we turn to the hearts of the Lord with the intention of preaching the gospel to other people, because, you know, no matter where you are, what stage of your, your, the Christian walk you're in, right? No matter where you are in the walk, we're all called to preach the gospel. If you, if you are saved, saved and you're in the body of Christ, if you receive the Holy Spirit, yeah, well, I mean, whether or not you have the boldness or not, um, tip and you know, like if you ask for boldness, the Lord will give it to you. But in any case, if you don't, I mean, you should still just try to preach the gospel anyways, because we're all called to preach the gospel because that will determine mankind's destiny, whether heaven or hell. So, I mean, there's just like absolutely no excuse. I mean, I mean, like, 
I mean, if you're, you're like, oh, Lord, I tried and tried to preach the gospel, but it didn't work successfully, that's totally fine. At least you try. At least you turn to the Lord, right? And so, so like, wh whatever stage you're in, it's okay. Um, just, just have the heart for the Lord. That's just number one. You know, and by the grace of God, he'll give you a heart for the Lord. If you, yeah, just, just turn to him. Like, honestly, just turn to him and see what will happen. Because honestly, I was a very shy person. I didn't want to preach the gospel. But suddenly, like, the Lord gave me the boldness, like, starting in 2020 when he activated um, the spiritual gift of evangelism. And personally, before that, there was a brother named Jesse. And he was like, yes, Tatsuya, you have the gift of evangelism. But I was like, no. And actually, the, the thing is that I'm going to be honest, though, because before that spirit gave me the boldness and the burden of the Lord to evangelize other people, one of the reasons why I didn't want to become a Christian was the obligation to preach the gospel. And, uh, and, and when I read the scriptures, I saw that there was absolutely no excuse for not talking about Jesus or not praising him or anything like that. So I just knew that that I didn't want to be a Christian, but the spirit kept on working in me, right? And that took me two years. So I mean, like, I'm not like a special person. And I'm not saying that like, everybody's going to immediately start becoming like, hot in preaching the gospel. No, I don't expect all believers to be hot for the gospel immediately or right off the spot. And I'm not looking for my own following a bunch of people who are like me this way, you know, like just younger believers or anybody who's going to be like me and be hot for the gospel, be crazy for Jesus. No, I'm not expecting that. But what I am saying is that like, that like, the spirit will move sovereignly in their lives and we should we should try to reach the ultimate goal of like being more like the apostle paul or even like me right now like hot for preaching the gospel we should all strive for that i'm not saying that everybody's going to be that way but i'm saying that like with the holy spirit in us we should always be striving for that so you know like honestly like two weeks ago um i was at a meeting in crew and or, or the spirit of the lord sovereignly moved upon me to join a crew meeting where there was evangelist and she was talking about simple tips of preaching the gospel you know and so one of the things is that like you know like i said like knocking on doors saying jesus loves you or even just saying can i talk about jesus or hey man if there's a heaven and hell how would you get into heaven or just starting the conversations those are the best like conversation starters of course the spirit might move different in a different direction and you could start off the conversation in another more uh, relaxed manner which um you know i just get right to the topic with strangers or with friends like i don't even care i just say hey can i talk about jesus you know and usually like if they reject it that or say no that or make some excuse for um for and say for saying like no i don't want to you to talk about jesus like i don't want you to that's totally fine you know like if they reject it and say no like it, the rule of thumb is that you want to leave them alone however like if they keep on pushing if they sometimes the spirit will say hey like tatsuya i want you to push and to preach the gospel to them so in that time like even though they say no you you can override their no and start preaching the gospel to them anyways if the spirit is really convicting you and i had two occasions when that happened and but anyways i was at this crew meeting and like um and yeah, and I just found out, wow, it's so simple to preach the gospel. So in any case, like whether or not I shepherd younger believers, like I'm just going to tell them tips to preach the gospel without expecting them to be like me or be hot for the gospel or anything like that. But, you know, honestly, like that's the fundamentals of a believer. If you don't know how to preach the gospel, how can you actually, you know, so you see like, so I'm just going to, for me, like I'm not going to force them, but I'm going to show them like just simple tips for preaching the gospel because it's so easy like once you start like you can never stop because if you have a heart for the lord once you start you can never stop because simply like preaching the gospel is super easy i mean there's just no other way to explain it right so anyways so i think i went on a little bit of a rant here but the bottom line is just preach the gospel honestly and why I had this, like, I'm talking really fast and I have such a heart is that, you know, honestly, like, people think I'm crazy because actually, like, usually I just don't stay at my house during the daytime because I just really want to preach the gospel and just talk to people about Jesus. And whether or not they hate me or not, I love God anyways. So I just want to gain more of his spirit, you know. So that's why I just preach the gospel out of a place of abundance and love. I just, just have the 
the desire in my heart. I don't want to lose sight of Jesus. So that's why I, I'm out there preaching the gospel every day of my life, like from, from 2020, is because I really do. And, you know, and I really feel the burden of the Lord. Um, you know, like people say, oh, like, you know, people inside the church, right? Like, I mean, like, it's important to take care of them, right? But honestly, like, people outside of the church is who I'm more concerned of because, you see, they're the ones who are going to hell anyways, right? And if they come and if they hate me and if they hate Jesus, if they hate the gospel, I can judge, I can't judge them. Like the Lord said, like, if you speak to unbelievers and they reject you and the gospel in my message, don't judge them. So I just leave the judgment up to God. And I leave the results of my evangelism up to God. But in any case, like, I'm just really hot for Jesus. And I just really want to go out there and preach the gospel. So I hope you guys learned a lot from this. Um, anyways, yeah, just a quick summary is that, you know, there's l just lots of simple tips. Just say, hey, can I talk to you about Jesus? Just approach anybody. Just say, hey, can I talk to you about Jesus? And, you know, like, whether or not how they think of you doesn't really matter at all. And, um, you know, with the coronavirus and stuff, I've been having trouble. But anyways, there's people out here that I could talk to. There's like just many, many other avenues where like I could actually just like, just, you know, I mean like, anyways, like nothing will stop you from preaching the gospel if the Lord really has it on your heart. And like, no matter what stage of the Christian life you're in, you should just always have a heart to just preach to anybody, whether it's friends, family, or total strangers. It's just, it's just has to be preached. I mean, because like, because we're all under the condition of sin. And, we, and you know, like, honestly, like, some people don't preach the gospel because they don't have the conviction in their heart to do so. But, like, the Lord will give you that strong conviction. We'll make you extreme for it. I mean, trust me, like, I mean, I, I didn't really want to preach the gospel, but now the Lord's really put it on my heart. And so lastly, um, you know, whether or not you get criticized for your way of preaching the gospel, I mean, does it really matter at the end of the day? It, it really doesn't. Whether or not you believe once saved, always saved, or not once saved, always saved, or if you, whether or not you believe in Calvinism or Armenianism, does it, I mean, does it really matter? No, not really. I mean, you know, the, the gospel message is one, right? So if we preach the same gospel message, whether you're Catholic, Protestant, no matter what sect of Christianity you're in, if you believe there's a heaven and a hell and the gospel and Jesus Christ is the way to salvation, and if you believe all men are sinful, then yeah, then you have all rights to preach the gospel in the way you want to. I mean, there's just nothing that's stopping you. The gospel message is just really simple. So, I mean, I don't know why you don't want to preach the gospel. Just go out there and do it. So, hey guys, so do you guys know what, what, how crazy this is? So anyways, I was actually on this table in this park, which is just a, just a few steps away from my home. I was preaching a go the gospel to these rebellious teenagers and they were saying that, oh, the Bible's, of course, like, you know, lots of people would d hate the Bible anyway. So they say, oh, it's a human book. You can't trust in it. So I was like, hey, like, aren't you human? Don't you trust yourself? Hey, don't you trust the, your friends you have? Or don't you listen to your parents? Or don't you like actually read other human books to get your own knowledge? Right. So, I mean, whether or not the Bible is, you know, a human book or whether or not like it wasn't written by God, like, why don't you test it out? Why don't you read it? Right. So. So anyways, but they kept on mocking me and teasing me. So I went away. Um, I went away from them and they're, you know, like they, they kept on mocking me. So I just there was just no way to anyways, like preach the gospel to them. The spirit just didn't move and suddenly give them the conviction of hell and that they're going to spend eternity in hell and they're going to suffer. And the Lord didn't show his righteousness and stuff like that immediately when I was on the spot. But, you know, the results of that evangelism were good because when I'm what I'm seeing on the table here is a picture of if you guys can see, it's a picture of a Bible. And they, the, this like person who hated me preaching the gospel actually started to draw some Christian art right here, right? So you see these, these people drew some Bibles and the cross just to make fun of me. But now whoever passes by this park will know that, that a Christian here was preaching the gospel and that this is, this cross is the way to salvation. So you see, even the people who mock you will we'll, um, start preaching, start like sharing about Jesus and how bad that message is. Or you see like they're, like it says in Philippians 1, right? Like they're um, like whether or not in pretense or truth, um, I'm just amazed that they're preaching the gospel or whether or not the person sincerely preaching the gospel or not. Like 
Paul doesn't care because they're preaching the gospel, right? But even those people whom I, who mock me for preaching the gospel, they, they started to draw some Christian stuff on here. And so it just kind of shows you like, hey, like, you know, like even the people who mock you, they're going to start like, like trying to specifically attack Christianity with their art and stuff like that. But you see, but you see, they, they drew stuff here, which is about Jesus Christ and the cross and how awful the message of the gospel is. But anyways, like, I, I think that when people see this type of art mocking the gospel, they, they could know that Jesus Christ is the way, is the truth and the life. Right. So, I mean, whether or not like they mock Jesus and stuff like that, like and they started to express Jesus in such a negative way that their negative expression of Jesus will help turn many people to Jesus Christ. And by the way, guys, when pe when I say the name Jesus, Jesus, people get offended because the name of Jesus is so powerful. Anyways, I just wanted to share that really quick.